So you're rolling your way down to the calculus garage to pick up your car and the mechanic opens the door and jumps out at you and he tells you that there's a problem. So you follow him into the garage. Now as you come to your car you see a lot of smoke coming out of the engine and you become slightly irritated. The mechanic tells you that the integration parts are faulty inside the car. He then says that he has no time and tells you that the manual is next to the car and since you need the car today you take a dive into integration by parts. Now, integration by parts is like a product rule, but for integration. And since integration and differentiation are so strongly linked, let's start with the product rule for differentiation. Now, we begin by integrating both sides, and on the left, we have the integral of the derivative. And since integration and differentiation are inverses to each other, this just cancels out. Now, doing a slight bit of rearranging gives us the famous integration by parts formula. But Hold on, what is actually happening here? What, what is integration by parts even doing? How can we visualize integration by parts? Now, let's say we had a curve defined parametrically by y equal to f of t and x equal to g of t. And let's say that we wanted to find the area between x1 and x2, and we also want to find the area between the corresponding y1 and y2. And since we have a parametric equation, we can say that x1 is g of of A, which gives Y1 as F of A. And similarly, X2 is G of B, so Y2 is F of B. Essentially, T equal to A and T equal to B gives us our two coordinates. Now, what we can see from this is that the yellow area plus the blue area is equal to this large rectangle with length G of B and height F of B minus this small rectangle with length G of A and height F of A. But how do we compute the blue and yellow area individually? Well, say you had some function f of x, then we know that the area between x1 and x2 is the integral between x2 and x1 of f of x dx. And since y is equal to f of x, we can write this as the integral between x2 and x1 of y dx. But how can we find the area between the corresponding y coordinates? Well, let's rotate the axes and we see that we have a normal looking graph, but the x axis is on the right and the y values increase as you go left, which is not normally what happens. So let's just rotate the graph around and you see that we have a perfectly normal looking graph. But the x and y axis have been swapped or relabeled. So this curve can be written as x as a function of y, let's say g of y. And so the area is the integral between y2 and y1 of g of y dy. And since x is g of y, this is the same as the integral of x dy. And again, this is nothing special. The x and y axis essentially have just been relabeled to each other. So back to our problem, the yellow area is the integral between f of a and f of b of x dy. And the blue area is the integral between g of a and g of b of y dx. Now the large rectangle has area f of b g of b and the small rectangle has area f of a g of a. Now we can write the right hand side as f of t g of t with a straight line down with b and a at the top and bottom. Now what we're going to do is use integration by substitution for the integrals on the left and if you don't know what that is yet check out our video on it. But we're going to sub in f of t and g of t with the corresponding dy and dx and this gives us the integral between b and a of f of t g dash of t d t plus the integral between b and a of f dash of t g of t dt. And then rearranging and writing everything compactly gives us the definite form of integration by parts. But how do we actually use this formula? How do we actually use integration by parts? Well, the best way to see this is through some examples. So here's our integration by parts formula. And what it says is that the integral of a function multiplied by 
by another function is equal to that function multiplied by the antiderivative of the other function minus the integral of the derivative of the function multiplied by the antiderivative of the other function. So for example, take the integral of minus x sine x. Let's take f equal to x and g dash equal minus sine x. Then the derivative of f is equal to 1 and g, which is the integral of g dash, is cosine x. And normally here we would write plus c. But integration by parts is actually quite special and you don't need to write plus c here and we will explain why later in the video. So then by the formula, we get the minus integral of x sine x is fg or x cosine x minus the integral of f dash g or the integral of 1 times cosine x, which is just the integral of cosine x, which is minus sine x plus c. And this is the answer to the integral. So essentially, the formula decomposes the integral into an easier integral which you can compute. Let's try the integral of x squared e to the x and take f equal to x squared and g dash equal to e to the x. Then f dash is equal to 2x and g is equal to e to the x. Then by the formula, we get the integral of x squared e to the x is equal to the x squared e to the x minus the integral of 2x e to the x. Now we see that the integral on the right is also a product of two functions. So we can use integration by parts again, a sort of nested integration, if you will. So take f equal to 2x and g dash equal to e to the x. This gives that the derivative of f is 2 and the integral of g dash is e to the x, which means that the integral of 2x e to the x is equal to 2x e to the x minus the integral of 2 e to the x. And the integral of 2 e to the x is just 2 e to the x. And combining everything together and adding a constant on the end gives us our answer. Now, what about the integral of the natural logarithm? Now, there are two special integrals which use a clever trick, and this is one of them. We write ln x as 1 times ln x and take f equal to ln x and g dash equal to 1, which gives f dash equal to 1 over x and g equal to x. And then by the formula, we have that the integral of the natural logarithm is equal to x ln x minus the integral of 1 over x times x. And since the x's cancel out, we get the integral of 1 dx, which is just x plus c, which gives us our answer to the integral. Now, you're probably thinking, how do we know which one to substitute? Because in the formula, we could sub in for f or we could sub in for g dash. So to get this right every time, the best rule to learn is that to substitute in for f, we use the rule Li8. And Li8 stands for logarithm, inverse trigonometric functions such as arctan and arcsine, algebraic such as x squared x cubed, trigonometric such as sine cosine tangent, and exponential. And what you do is you substitute in for f in the order of Li8. And to practice this, check out our problem sheet in the description below, which also has the second special integral where we multiply by 1. And it also explains why integration by parts is so special and why we don't need a plus C when integrating G dash. Now, if you guys learned anything, hit that like button. If you haven't already, subscribe and head over to mathesy.com for problem sheets, notes, and more of my videos.